This video is sponsored by UPerfect, portable PC monitor manufacturing and lap dock developing since 2017. Hey guys, how are y'all doing? Max here. This is my Raspberry Pi 3D Plus and up until now I've been using it with my TV as a monitor. So with this upcoming transformation into becoming the maker's must-have workbench device, it's going to get a whole lot cooler. That is thanks to the sponsors of this video, UPerfect, with their UPi Raspberry Pi monitor, which this thing will be clipping onto. At the same time as this video progresses, you'll learn how to get set up with your own Raspberry Pi and how to get the Raspberry Pi OS installed and configured. So without further ado, let's get on with the video. So here's everything that came with the UPi monitor kit. Over here we have the cables that connect the Pi to the monitor, a charging adapter used as a 5 volt 2 amp power supply, monitor stand with all the screws, a pen slash touch pen, the instruction manual, and some additional video and power cables. And here's the 7 inch touchscreen monitor itself. On the back of it is actually where your Raspberry Pi clips on, there's a row of buttons, power input and HDMI ports. It even has its own pair of built-in speakers on the top. Looking at the UPerfect website, they offer a couple of other Raspberry Pi monitors as well. And the one I have here not only supports the Pi 3B+, but also models 2, 3, and 4, as well as it can connect with other computers and even consoles. You may even want to know more about it, so here's its full list of specs. What makes it so unique is that it allows your Pi to be clipped onto the back, unlike many other brands of Pi monitors. Some other good uses of this monitor could be for surveillance, vehicle navigation systems, industrial automation, and even for drones. UPerfect even offers professional portable PC monitors, so definitely consider giving UPerfect a try. The Raspberry Pi 3B Plus, a credit card sized single board mini computer. It features 2.4 and 5 GHz Wi-Fi along with Bluetooth, with a quad USB port, Ethernet, AUX, HDMI and 5 volt in port, along with 40 general purpose input output pins, it makes for quite a cool little device with great potential. Take a minimum 8GB SD card and plug it into your computer. Before going further or installing any programs on it, make sure you format the card. Next you're going to want to head on to your PC and get to the software section of the Raspberry Pi website. Previously the software was called Raspbian but it has now been updated to Raspberry Pi OS. So scroll down and install the Raspberry Pi imager that's according to your current PC's operating system. So once it is installed and opened, you should get this screen popping up here. Just press install, and it has now installed the actual Raspberry Pi imager tool, and it'll open once you press finish. Once the imager is opened, you're going to want to choose your OS. You can either go with the recommended version, the full version, or the Raspberry Pi OS Lite version. And it throws you a few others that you may want to install. Apart from these default options, you may also want to install a custom imager by selecting a file from your computer that you downloaded online. A good example would be the 64-bit version. You might want to go with that instead, though I'm going to select the full 32-bit desktop version. Once you've selected your operating system, next select the SD card which you plugged in. Careful not to confuse it with any other device. Press the right button and then confirm. This is going to take a while, so you can have a coffee break while it's writing to the SD card. So once it's finished writing the OS to the card, you can press continue and eject your micro SD card. You can now slot it into your mini computer board. Now let's hook the Pi up to the 7 inch display. First by physically mounting it onto the back by securing it with 4 screws. Next we'll hook it up electronically. These are the three cables that were included in the kit. The first one will be the set of 5 volt GPIO power supply wires connecting the Pi to the monitor. And then comes the video signal HDMI cable. And lastly, the cable that enables touchscreen capability. With the three cables connecting the Pi to the monitor, it all looks pretty tidy. The last thing to assemble is the set of prop stand legs. It's not a game. It's a red now let's power up the mini PC with the included 10 watt adapter and cable. So once you power up your Pi, you should be prompted with this startup screen. After pressing next to the welcoming tab, enter your country, language and time zone. 
And to continue further with the setup, you'll need to hook up a keyboard to it. And then enter a new password. Next you'll need to tick this box if your desktop is not in frame. If it's in frame, then just keep going. In the next slide, you can select your Wi-Fi network and connect up to it. By clicking next over here, it'll check for updates and start an update if needed. If you don't want it to update, you can just press skip. While it's updating, you may hook up your mouse to your Pi. Once the setup is complete, click done and you're all set. If you didn't manage to hook up to your Wi-Fi network during the setup, then you can do it up here on the top right hand corner. As you can see, I'm now connected. So as you can see me typing into the web browser, I'm obviously using my external keyboard. Not to have this clanky big old keyboard always in front of it. I thought it'd be better if I show you how to enable the virtual keyboard on the Pi. Using the terminal, it's actually easier than it seems to enable it. So open up the terminal and type sudo apt install onboard, which will install the onboard keyboard. Though you'll have to confirm your installation by typing Y when it asks you. So once it's installed, press on the Raspberry Pi icon, scroll down to universal access, and then click on onboard. Once it has appeared, click on the keyboard icon that has also appeared along with it, scroll down to preferences. Oh, and you can also open up the keyboard's preferences tab by going to the main menu and under preferences. Then once you're in general of the keyboard's preferences tab, tick this box to show the floating icon in the bottom right hand corner so that when you want to type, you can quickly toggle the keyboard. And keep this box ticked if you want the upper icon to stay so that you can access the preferences. And then going down to the theme section, you can select a skin for your keyboard, pretty much. So once you've set up your new onboard keyboard to your liking, you can now go ahead and type something in. Oh, and I also installed a Linux version of Firefox for the Pi. I did this since YouTube didn't want to open up in the Chromium web browser. Personally, I find having this virtual keyboard to be a lot handier than having a bulky external keyboard always in front of it. If you noticed, this virtual keyboard has the same exact keys that a PC keyboard would have. Even all of the F keys and arrow keys. So now focusing more on the UPI monitor, those five buttons on the back side of the monitor allow you to change the monitor's settings in its menu, such as brightness, color, resolution, etc. They even made the top button as the power button for this mini PC, so that's pretty handy to have. In the kit they also included a pen which can be used as a touch pen, though the screen happens to be more responsive when you're just tapping with your fingers, but it is optional. Of course with a 1GB RAM computer board like the Raspberry Pi, you shouldn't expect top notch speed. Things of course open and load a lot more slowly than they would on any other general desktop PC. But keeping your expectations low on the cool little thing it is, it's not much of a problem. To adjust volume, you can just open the volume slider on the top right hand corner. And the speakers on this monitor are pretty loud. I'm actually quite impressed for their size. So let me show you the games that this Raspberry Pi is loaded with. The full OS version I installed actually came with five different games. To play them, you can only use an external keyboard. The games include Boing, Bunner, Cavern, Myriapod, and Soccer. So as a maker, when you're on your break, you can do a bit of gaming. Under the programming tab, you can see just how many programming language tools are included with the Raspberry Pi OS full version. To that list, I also managed to add the Arduino IDE. So I can now program my Arduino boards from this mini PC. How cool is that? This is going to come in so handy with future Arduino projects. And even if I'm at my workbench prototyping with a circuit, this monitor comes in quite handy when following circuit diagrams that I find on the web. 
Also, stay tuned for the upcoming YouTube video on part 2 of the Razer E300 upgrade mini series, where you'll see my ride get equipped with a whole bunch more cool features. This will be an exciting one, so keep that notification bell on. Alright guys, so if you enjoyed watching this video or found it helpful, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and comment down below. And don't feel shy to leave your questions or doubts regarding getting set up with a Raspberry Pi. Also, don't forget to check out UPerfect and get yourself one of these monitors. There's a discount code linked in the description below this video and all the other purchase links. So check them out and get yourself one. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll catch you around soon. Peace!